I would like to uh, uh, show you a few of the, the characters that are in play here to make it a little bit more personal. Like for example, these little brown dots are um, snails. And the snails you know, feed on the bacteria. And the, uh, because the bacteria forms the, at the end of the treatment process, forms the, um, the, the excess sludge, you know, the sort of the leftover, uh, and that costs a lot of money to dewater and to take it somewhere dispose, dispose of. Uh, it is very important how much sludge we, had, uh, uh, we have at the end of the day. When you have a lot of snails, they will eat a lot of bacteria and you will get a lot less sludge. Of course, you can ask what happens to all those fat snails. And it's a very good question. You know, the snails uh, will obviously die at the end of their life cycle, they will decompose and there will be the new bacteria who will eat them. So uh, the, the whole question is about creating a balance, an ecological balance. So we have all the food that's coming in and we are, if you want, we are, we are fueling a much more complex ecosystem with that available food. And if you can keep it in balance, you will have much less excess uh, uh, material at the end uh, left, just like in a pristine natural environment, in a nice lake if you can think of, or a nice river, where the, uh, the, the load and the, and the ecosystem uh, are in balance and the ecosystem is able to process all that food that's come, that comes into that. So it's really about creating that balance. So let's just take a look at a couple of characters here. This one shows uh, single cell organisms whose uh, Strategy is obviously moving around and taking in the dissolved organic matter. That's the sort of the traditional one, also important. But then there are other characters, like the next one, who is this big guy, who is attached to the root, and is waiting until the little guy shows up. And uh, until the little guy sh finds its way into its mouth, and uh, with a big gulp, the little guy becomes dissolved organic matter. Uh, very quickly. And then later, which I can't show you now, you know, a grazer will come and will eat the big guy. And then, you know, layer upon layer, uh, the drama uh, continues, just like in the National Geographic video with the lions and the, and the antelope. It's the same thing, really. It's just in microscopic scale. Let's just take a look at the next one. This is an amoeba, for example, and you can see here how it cleans up, gobbles up the the, what we would consider dirt, but it's really food for the organism. But the, the, the one aspect to know is that the single cell organism is capable, capable of this uh, complexity, um, um, functions of this level of complexity. Let's take a look at the next one, which is a uh, um, microscopic view of an aquatic worm. And you can see how it's, uh, you know, looking for food and how the food, uh, goes down on its uh, digestive tract. We just like to call this the little vacuum cleaner. And uh, we have a lot of friends in microscopic scale. We just have to learn how to talk to them. Let's just take on the next one. And uh, the last example are these, again, organisms that are attached to the root. And you can maybe, you can make out this huge opening, their mouth and the cilia with the help of which they di direct the food, uh, I mean the water, and they screen out uh, the last remaining uh, remnants of the available food there. Mm 